<laughs> the difference. Yeah, I need Gustavo saying like this is Carla Zeus. <laughs> In the y variables of two points on the line. I'm going to write these other things in just another color just because I have one up here and I like my notes to be colorful. But rise goes up and down. Because it's on which axes? Y. It uses the y axes. This is our y. And if because it's our y, that means that this is our dependent. All of those things we've talked about with X and Y, domain and range, they're all still here. We're just putting them on a graph and using their relationship with each other. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we keep going. Run is, yep, that's the only difference in this definition is I'm gonna change Y to X. But when I say difference in the definition, the word difference means subtraction. Any two points. Mm -hmm. In, this one's independent. Because this one goes across back and forth, that means it's related to the X. And X is always our independent. This is the same kind of thing we've talked about. Like the number of bananas you buy tells you how much you're gonna pay. So the cost of the bananas depends on the number, right? How far you run depends on how long you run. I mean, it also depends on your own personal speed and some other things, but the distance depends on the time, right? Slope has a variable. It's M. And the definition of slope of a line is the ratio. That's why we always see these in a fractional type of look. A ratio of rise to run for any, and that's an important word here, two points on a line. So this is a ratio of the change in Y over the change in X. And we'll write that down below in a series of, there's lots of different ways to write slope. I'm going below where my Cornell notes section are, but we're going to continue talking about slope here. M is equal to rise over run. In a visual way, since I'm a visual learner, it also means that it could look like this over this. We're looking for the distance between two points going up and down and two points going left or right. Hmm? Does, does that actually indicate just the way you write it? This is a delta. That triangle there means change in. It's a shortcut way in math of writing change in. Mm -hmm. So make a little note to yourself to the side that delta, that's this triangle shape, it means change in.
there's a formula for this and you guys encountered it when I wasn't here last week with a Khan Academy video I left I don't like the formula because it's confusing <coughs> y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1 remember that yeah. well it's just the same thing change in y over the change in x the difference in two points in y over the difference in two points in x that's why the formula is this because we're taking a point in, y, in x and y and subtracting them the sub 2 sub 1 thing kind of makes it seem like it has to be specific ones it doesn't it's any two points on the line Okay, so last week you guys had this paper. Let's look at number three. Now, every time we start this, I want you guys, whenever there's slope involved, to keep in mind this question. W, W, S, D, S. What, what would slope dude, dude, dude say? say. Yeah. When I look at this line, what would slope dude say? Okay, nice. that means my slope is going to be negative. Now, I had you guys drawing triangles. There's two ways you could do it. You could draw it the way I just did, or the other one. Either way, you're going to get the same rise over run. Now, we can just count the spaces in between. One, two, three, four is my rise. How many goes across from my run? Two, oh. three, four, five. Now, let's look at this graph. It's not labeled with numbers. What is this point right here? Negative one for the y, but what's the x? One, two, three? Two. So this point is, neg is three comma negative one. What's this point down here? Oh, I just did that wrong. I looked at my triangle. What's this point? We're going, starting at the origin and going left two and down one. So this is negative two comma negative one. What about this point down here? What's its coordinate points? One, two, three. Down, one, two, three, four, five. This is where that equation comes in with the change in y over the change in x. If I take negative five and negative one and subtract them, negative 5 minus a negative 1 and 3 minus negative 2 that's that slope formula we just looked at I'm not worried about y sub 1 y sub 2 I want to make sure that this y matches this x in my coordinate pair and it does and I want to make sure that this y matches this x in my coordinate pair and it does and I'm just going to subtract if I have a negative negative 1 that's going to turn into a so negative 5 plus 1 is 4 and 3 minus negative 2 is going to be negative 5 that's where the negative sign came from this equals positive 4 over negative 5 and we rewrite that as our slope is the whole thing is negative because we get a negative line. Two ways to find it. You can draw the triangle. You can just count them. But if you don't have a graph, you could also take the two pairs and subtract. Okay? Before I give you your problems, what would slope dude say about this one? Whisper it. That's it. The slope on this is undefined. That's what it's called. What about back here? Undefined. Zero. Zero fun. Okay, slope dude would say zero fun, but 
the real world, the slope here is the number zero. Because there's no change in y over change in x. There's zero. Okay? So here is your problems, and they are due at the end of class. And if you don't finish them, you are coming by after school to finish them. It's not hard. You are finishing this paper. Okay. You're turning it back in. If you lost it and had to get a new one, you might set this aside and do it later. On the piece of paper I asked you to get out when you came in, right now, put your heading. Name, today's date is the 17th, 5th, and this is 5-3. You are doing problems 4 through 11 and 14 to 19 on page 318 to 319. And that paper is due before you leave. Okay. That's a lot. Questions? Keep in mind. What would slope you say? Well, we should do 